equatorial. The extraocular muscles are located within the orbit, but are extrinsic and separate from the eyeball itself. They act to control the movements of the eyeball and the superior eyelid. There are seven extraocular muscles, the levator palpebris superioris, the superior rectus, inferior rectus, medial rectus, lateral rectus, inferior oblique, and superior oblique. Functionally, they can be divided into two groups. The first group is responsible for eye movement, the recti and oblique muscles, and the second group is responsible for superior eyelid movement, that is the levator palpebri superioris. Before we take a look at these muscles, let's review the different movements of the eyeball. We will use the pupil as the point of reference for movement. The pupil can be moved up and down, which is known as elevation and depression. Abduction and adduction of the eyeball causes the pupil to be moved laterally and medially, respectively. The eyeball also has torsional movements, which bring the eyeball towards the nose, intorsion, and away from the nose, extorsion. These movements are also referred to as internal and external rotation. Let's take a look now at the levator palpebri superioris. This long name is the descriptive Latin name which literally translates as the elevator of the upper eyelid. The levator palpebri superioris is the only muscle involved in raising the superior eyelid. The eyelids contain a structure called the tarsus, a superior tarsus in the upper eyelid and an inferior tarsus in the lower eyelid, which provides significant support for the structure of the eyelids. A collection of smooth muscle fibres attaches from the levator palpebri superioris to attach on the superior aspect of the superior tarsus. This collection of muscles is known as the superior tarsal muscle and is innervated by the sympathetic nervous system. This muscle originates from the lesser wing of the sphenoid bone, immediately above the optic foramen. It attaches to the superior tarsal plate of the upper eyelid, which is a thick plate of connective tissue. The action of this muscle, as the name suggests, is to elevate the upper eyelid. It is innervated by the ocular motor nerve, cranial nerve number 3. The superior tarsal muscle, located within the levator palpebri superioris, is innervated by the sympathetic nervous system. Let's take a look now at the muscles involved in eye movement. There are six muscles involved in the control of the eyeball itself. They can be divided into two groups. You've got the four recti muscles and the two oblique muscles. Let's start first with the recti muscles. There are four recti muscles, the superior rectus, inferior rectus, medial rectus and lateral rectus. These muscles characteristically originate from the common tenderness ring, also known as the annulus of Zinn. This is a ring of fibrous tissue which surrounds the optic canal at the back of the orbit. From their origin, the muscles pass anteriorly to attach to the sclera of the eyeball. The name recti is derived from the Latin word which means straight. This represents the fact that the recti muscles have a direct path from origin to attachment. This is in contrast with the oblique eye muscles which have an angular approach to the eyeball. The superior rectus muscle originates from the superior part of the common tendinous ring and attaches to the superior and anterior aspect of the sclera. The main action of this muscle is elevation and it also contributes to adduction and medial rotation of the eyeball. It is innervated by the third cranial nerve, the oculomotor nerve. The inferior rectus muscle originates from the inferior part of the common tendinous ring 
and it inserts onto the inferior and anterior aspect of the sclera. Its main movement is depression, but it also contributes to adduction and lateral rotation of the eyeball. It is innervated by the oculomotor nerve, cranial nerve 3. The medial rectus muscle originates from the medial part of the common tendinous ring and inserts onto the anteromedial aspect of the sclera. It acts to adduct the eyeball. This muscle is also innervated by the oculomotor nerve, cranial nerve number 3. The lateral rectus muscle originates from the lateral part of the common tendinous ring and attaches to the anterolateral aspect of the sclera. As you may guess by the insertion point of this muscle, it acts to abduct the eyeball. This muscle is innervated by the abducens nerve, cranial nerve 6. You can see now why the abducens nerve gets its name, because it is responsible for the abduction of the eyeball via innervation of the lateral rectus muscle. Let's take a look now at the oblique muscles. There are two oblique muscles the superior and inferior obliques. Unlike the recti group of muscles, they do not originate from the common tendinous ring. From their origin, the oblique muscles take an angular approach to the eyeball, in contrast to the straight approach of the recti muscles. They attach to the posterior surface of the sclera. The superior oblique originates from the body of the sphenoid bone. Its tendon passes through a fibrocartilaginous pulley known as the trochlea, which is attached to the trochlear fovea of the frontal bone. From here, the superior oblique muscle then attaches to the sclera of the eye, posterior to the superior rectus muscle. It acts to depress, abduct and medially rotate the eyeball. This muscle is innervated by the trochlear nerve, Cranial nerve number 4. The inferior oblique muscle originates from the medial side of the orbital floor. It attaches to the sclera of the eye posterior to the lateral rectus muscle. Its action is to elevate, abduct and laterally rotate the eyeball and is innervated by the third cranial nerve, the oculomotor nerve. So all the extraocular muscles are innervated by the oculomotor nerve except for the lateral rectus and the superior oblique which are innervated by the abducens nerve and the trochlear nerve respectively. It's important to note that whilst you can describe the actions of each muscle in terms of its specific movements of the eyeball, that all the extraocular muscles work in conjunction with one another to produce coordinated movement of the eyeball. For instance, in the vertical plane, to produce elevation and depression, the superior rectus muscle and the inferior oblique muscles work together in a coordinated manner to produce elevation of the eyeball. When the eyeball is in the neutral position looking straight ahead, both these muscles will contract to produce elevation. When the eye is held in an abducted position, the superior rectus muscle is mainly responsible for elevation whereas in the adducted position, the inferior oblique is mainly responsible for elevation, and vice versa with regard to depression of the eyeball and coordination of the inferior rectus muscle and the superior oblique. That is, in the abducted position, the superior and inferior rectus muscles are responsible for elevation and depression, whereas in the adducted position, the superior and inferior oblique muscles are responsible for elevation and depression. Also. As you can see, there are several muscles which produce the same movement. The main abductor of the eyeball is the lateral rectus muscle, but this movement will also be assisted by the superior and inferior oblique muscles. So that's the anatomy of the extraocular muscles. If you have found this video useful, please click on the like button below and subscribe to Anatomy Zone for more tutorials. Thank you for watching. The 3D models used in this tutorial were powered by the excellent and free anatomy learning app. Check it out for yourself.